Dallas Cusnet, First Citizen Sunday, 8 p.m., W5FC. This is the W5SE repeater, PL110.9.
Ham Fittings Net, first and third Monday, 7 p. W55 c. Mr. Chairman, I make myself very clear. clear. If we uplink link now, Skynet will be in the military. But I will be in control of Skynet, right? That is correct, sir. Skynet. Skynet. Does anyone need to use Twitter before, before we begin tonight? Skynet. This is Buckle 5, I didn't need to use the X-ray. Hey, my name's Malky, your your net control for this session of the DARC Skynet. Skynet is loosely net called every Saturday night at 8 at 9 p.m. during the subject subject of astronomy. I mean, the purpose is this is to help them come more familiar with the nighttime, daytime time, sky, I mean, and space in general. This, this net is all amateurs who are interested in this topic. We encourage your participation, comments, and suggestions for this, this net. Stations with the priority emergency traffic may enter the net at any time by using the sign break, 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 very enthusiastically in your call sign. I would just use the name for the or priority traffic at this time. time. This is direct in that net, therefore please not transmit without direction from that net control by any station concerned the idea at the end of your commission. Please net operates on this frequency with a field to field tone of 1.9. Check and see if I are also full using the 35 FC dash R station ID or, or echoing 372247. So topics, astronomy charts, pictures, lots audio, video, video links are available online to go to the club website site like P5. Frychicken.org, that's 75FFC.org right now for the complete fleet. Remember to tell others about this popular net. All amateur offers are welcome. You can have to give many amateur material to participate. This net, net is even as long as it's structured in several parts. We have general announcements. Texas Astronomical Society of Dallas, where and when you can look to the Telltales National Space Society. Events. Discussion touch and top of the evening was the space exploration of the street, constellation of the week, week, launches for the week, recent astronomical discoveries, visible satellite passages over the next couple of days, astronomical Q&A in the 73 round. Uh, we may or may not get to all of those topics, but we'll certainly try. We're going to go ahead and start with round one plus is short, short time back in. If you are one of those, we'd like to check in now. With your uh, call sign set for your name, when you're transmitting from short time late, please. Hello, Charlie Funny Five, Pop Oscar, Oscar, Jane, Dan, Tan, Tan, and Alan. Short time. 
K5, they can let us stay down to 5 BLT, Garland, uh, handheld, handheld time. Delta Alpha, Richard, Harris, Texas, short time. Okay, we've got KC5MPO, Jamie and Dallas. Uh, W5BLTT, Bill, Arlen, KJ5DWA, Richard, in, in Dallas. And any other short short time checks, please come out. Okay, does anyone currently check in have anything from NASA they would like to bring before they dis disappear to the ether? Please come with a call now. Okay, here now, let's go ahead and take general check-in. Check-in, let's come now with, with your call sign phonetically, your name, where you're training from. General check-in. Kilo Fox Trot 5, Juliet Ho Hotel Office, Chaz, Outer Space. Alpha Alpha 5, Alpha Hotel, Robert Richardson. November, Victor 5, Fox Trot, Virginia, Fort. Is Whiskey Bravo number four, Mike Foxtrot, India, with you E four M M L I, head Dallas, low power. Kilo five. Juliet, Delta, Whiskey, John, and Coppell. Kilo, Fox, Fox, Trot, Fox, Zulu, Bravo, Bill, Farmers, Branch, Branch. November, number five, Ski, Yankee, Joseph, East Dallas. Kilo, Bravo, Nine, Sarah, Oscar, Oscar, Kilo, John, and Forward. Delta 5, Otto Fox Drive, Kilo 5, Mike, Charlie, Delta, Delta, Dallas, Low, Low, Pep. We'll hold up there. I am going to need some pills. There was uh, one double, and I, and I think I will two of you in that double. So if you don't hear your, your call, we'll uh, tr please try again, again on this next round. We have, uh, what do we see here? Mark where I was, was left off. Yeah, 5 jha that'd be Chaz and Outer Space, space AG9SG. That would be Antonio and Neil, and this is very scratchy, Antonio. Uh, very unusual tool for you. I, I do have you checked as A5AA8, Robert Richardson, and B5F, Virginia, in Fort Worth, B4 MMFI at in Dallas, K5JDW, John and Coppell, KF5ZBL, Mr. Bill, Farmers Branch, N5WY, Joseph, East Dallas, KB99, SOK, Sean, and Fort Worth, N5OX, Clay, and Miss Mesquite, KK5MC, 
ACD, Cody in Dallas. I know I missed at least these two. Uh, let's go for another round. Please, please call sign phonetically your name and where you're transmitting from. Whiskey Bravo 05, Zulu Lulu Lane, friend in Dallas. This is... Kilo got five whiskey, Victor Lima, James, and Carrollton. Okay, picked up those two. WB five O Z L Miss Miss Brenda and Dallas plus K G five whiskey whiskey for Lena James James and Sun. Anyone else uh check in, please come out. Kilo India five, Juliet, Charlie, Mike, Thomas, and Yulia. Jacob Dallas. Okay, pick up two more. I've got KI55, JC, Thomas, and Ulyss, and then, and then I've got, Jay. all I got was, was Foxtrot, Romeo, uh, Jake, Jacob, go ahead and get full call again. Okay, Kilo Lily, uh, the call is Kilo Golf 5, Uniform, Fox, Foxtrot, Romeo, and thanks for picking me up. Ah, heard you loud and clear that time. Cage 5 ufr it's up in Dallas. I do be checked in. Yeah. I'll now move over to Echolink. Yes, there's, there's one out there, maybe two. On Echolink, if you'd like to join, join us. Please come with your call sign, Phonetic. Yeah, Echolink only, only, please. This is Kilo 5, Kilo Tango X-Ray Kelly in point. We have K5KTX, Miss Kelly over in point. I'll now open it to anywhere, anywhere, any mode. If you'd like to join us, Miss, please come with your client phonetically. Your new transmitting coming from. Do we have, have any general announcements for this, this evening? These can be ham, astronomical, space, or of general interest in what I can. Please come in your call. Nothing? Nothing at all? Okay, well, well, usually Tony's here, he's, uh, maybe he's away, we'll give him a chance, he checks in, we'll then we'll give him a two. Bring up the day. Uh, let, let's see, we have the usual litany of, uh, announcements, don't forget the AM, AM set satellite, light, free amateur satellite for group, it's actually three, three nets at in Dallas. Tuesday evening, sitting at 8 p.m., there is the, uh, uh, of Houston Tech Tech, you can get that through AMSAT, uh, uh, under Echo, or you can go, go to AMSAT.com and, uh, listen over the live, live audience. The other one will allow you to check in. We also also have, uh, Dallas AMSAT at East East, at Tuesday, also at 8 o'clock, Woke, locally, right on the street, Peter, Tom, and 5H, right, right. Is, is the next poll. Everyone is most welcome to check in. Except the first Tuesday of the month of the year. Club tonight. No, and, and, and. If you miss that net, 
or or you can go to Amped and West. That's every Wednesday night, night at 9 p.m. on the Arlington Repeater. I believe at 1477.40 megahertz. So 110.99 for the for the positive offset. Set. We have a whole bunch of DARC hosted nets. Mondays have a rotating series of nets at, at 7 p.m. First week, week is Hampton's net. Uh, have to do with the, the cooking food, you name seven minutes to approximately eight o'clock. Uh, bring your recipe. Second week is MCOM1, non-denomination net about emergency communications. Come on, come on. If you are uh, part of a served agency and you'd like to talk about what you do, this is a great net. Second week at 7, 7 p.m. on Monday. The week we have have Ham Fix Net A second and coming of. Come on by for more of that. Fourth week Geek Net. We expand beyond just talking about amateur radio and into all the things geeky. So get your your questions, Jim, something you would like like to talk of or he sort of uh, science and this is the one to go to. Then then finally it is a fifth month. We have a surprise net. I told you what it is, it wouldn't surprise. Always on air participation and it's always a lot of fun. Fridays, this is Search City Emulation at 8 at 8 a.m. about emergent version radio communications. You should see a certain amateur radio, radio option. Melissa, Kathy, or H is the net control. This is, this is the most master prone city in the universe every Friday, Search City. All are welcome to check that in. Then we have, have daily, daily. Oh, don't forget Saturdays. I forgot about Saturdays. Uh, 7 p.m. is TechNet. Darn, darn, you missed it. Uh, Sky between 88 the ARRRL net traffic system training training net normalized net at 6 p.m. involves message handling. If you're new to ham radio or, or you'd like to phone up on things having to do, to do with a formal normalized net, this is a good one. And it's a training net, so you can do no wrong. Uh, that, that's it from here. I can tell you about tonight's afterglow move net. Now this one was unusual. Well, I tried. I made to come up, come up with something funny. When you've already got a comedy, it's hard to do something thing here that talks about a com comedy. So I ripped the thought off your web somewhere. The three stitches are clean, cleaner than sport when they accidentally take off and up and on penis. The boys encounter a talking unicorn, a giant fire-breathing tarantula, and an, and an alien computer that creates three really evil duplicates of the stooges. In case you ever were wondered. I almost had on Star Trek, Trek the unicorn of eight, fire-breathing tarantula was a thing ball, and the green computer was uh, no, no man. At any rate, there you have it. Join us for Half Robot, 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 Robot. Rocket will travel from 959. We'll be talking with you about tonight at 1030. You can keep up with all, all the ASC events and activities by going to the public site, w5fc.org. And Brenda's over here, over here, and says Trek had a dog, dog with a horn, a horn. Yes, it did. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Where was I? Now I'm complete. Oh, more checks. Anybody else? Anybody else want to join us? Come with your call now. Call now. Up is Texas Astronomical Soul Society of Us, where and when and when you threw a post of Chaz at 5JJHA. What do you have for us tonight? Hello? Hello? Thank you, Tom. I, I forgot to check in Bob the Cat, too, so, you know, put him in the list there. Uh, our semester is actually our net control tonight, so slide, slide number one is the next. Texas Astronomical Society Club meeting. meeting is going to be Friday, February the 24th. The meeting will be held at 7.30 p.m. in person at the University of Texas, Dallas, and also it will be held on, on Zoom. The featured speaker here is Dr. Renee James, talking about th things that bump in the universe. This should be fun, exciting. Now, Saturday public observations continue. Skynet was picked, picked to be on your nights. There could be an opportunity for live reports from the Texas Astronomical Society of Public Observing Session. 
on the second Saturday of the month. That would be tonight. Stargazing is held at Fred Frisk. Guess what? Did not have that happened. Yeah, some black clouds or something. So we, we can't get any words from them. Um, you can check the, the task site, texasastro.org, for upper up information and details about meetings and, and observing sessions. And this is KF5JJ, back to door control, KE5ICX. It's you, Miss, Mr. Tom. Well, thank you, Jess. Anybody have any questions or need any fills, please come with your call now. I figured that this much everybody has heard these resistance any time before, at least if you're regular. regular. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask specific, specifically if LN5BB is on frequency, if he has not checked in yet, he, he nearly always does, does very religiously, so let me tell out there. It's time for National Space Society events and activity, so Bill LN5BB, if you're out there, please come now. I'll just read, read what we got here for the, the standard bourbon that is, that is, the National Space Society of the North has an act, active space page to cite the National Space Society of the North has a search box and request access to be receiving reading binders and club activities. Information on club activities, they, uh, you can go to website, site, their site, which is ntx.nss.org, National Space Space Society is about educating, promoting, so social, economic and technological advances today, namely of the billions that out there. Uh, they have a Sunday, one week, once a month, Sunday, Sunday meeting uh, with a topic, either electronic or the internet, video conferencing, or, some, or somebody who comes to the event. So uh, check them out. That's the National Space Society of North Texas. Now, now, I have, uh, as net control, a uh, session topic of the meeting, or at least a presentation. I've stolen this from the EOS.com website, and Seyma Siddiq is the one, the science writer for that, for that, who talks about how Artemis and astronauts will navigate on the moon. I thought this might, might be kind of interesting. Uh, nobody had uh, really desisted in the past, and as we're getting things closer and closer, closer to man, man landing on the moon one end, uh, this sort of thing is starting to come into play again. Yeah. Uh, this is a little lengthier than normal, but because this is some of the topics are a little light, I think, I think we can get away with this and it still, still be interesting. So here, here we go. It's been more than 50 years the last Apollo astronauts set that foot on the moon. But, but new sets of lunar boot prints move and appear. There are traditions named after Artemis, which I'm sure is possible in Greek and Greek mythology, to send a handful of people to the moon with the first group scheduled, scheduled land in 2020-25. That has just the uh, announced for 2026. Apollo astronauts explored the lunar surface in well-lit areas with relatively benign topography. Artemis astronauts, on the other hand, will handle this as torturous, torturous terrain. Planetary geology David Crane from the Lunar Planetary Institute. Navigating, work, working, and reading the most scientific interesting sites will be challenging. They're, they're asking more of astronauts this time, the planetary scientist David Smith yes, of Massachusetts Institute Technology. Nevertheless, lunar reader researcher confidence art Artemis astronauts will make fascinating observations, eagerly anticipating the science they will be digging into both figuratively and literally. I hope they get there soon and from a good shovel, both uh, planetary scientists, Mark Landis, of the Laboratory for at Atmospheric Space Physics at the University of Colorado. Hold it. And this is K5 
KE-5 ICM control for Skynet. The first of the Apollo land site had, had the boring. It was the first time that they were, they were going to the moon. Uh, boy, boy, they just naming people from that planetary ge geologist. They could have just dropped off that business and goes on and on with different people each time. But anyway, they said where NASA astronauts uh, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin took humanity's first, first step soon is a level fast cell, cell plane paving the way for the Artemis astronauts who led to the rugged, rugged South Pole. It follows the earliest missions were to a little sea of tree of trade. This time, we're talking about about to the elves. Mons, 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 a mountain whose edge is visible from Earth with the help of a telescope. Among the features that make the South Pole will end about 10 kilometers below its highest peak lies by the base of Shoemaker. Impact difference in elevation between peak peak crater is comparable to the distance between sea level level top of Mount Mount Everest. At additional crews, masses of the plateaus extend them from the pole. The dazzling terrain would be a national park if it were here on Earth. The patterns of solar radiation also also wish the lunar south pole. Rather than rising, the thing the surface navigates the horizon, which means some of the polar regions are nearly always illuminated in an ideal site for long-term solar bases NASA would like to build. Firstly, some regions are almost completely dark, so-called persistently shadowed regions, or PRs. Stars are, are fully located on the, on the floors of craters near, near the poles, where the sun, the sun never runs high enough to illuminate and warm them. them. As well, PSR stars are certainly cold, and for the reason, they may harbor or ice. Finding a substantial source of water may be a huge benefit for long-term lunar exploration and, and beyond. Scientists think this drink it and its component, component oxygen and hydro hydrogen could to make breathable, breathable air rocket fuel. In the 1990s, scientists have looked for, for ice in the moon south of Pole using a range of instruments from the air sea radio telescope to uncrewed spacecraft that data has been difficult to interpret. A similar area on Mercury is abundant in water, but it seems that, that ice makes only around 1% of the volume of the sediments in the coldest region. So that's the big, the big mystery. Why is there seemingly so much less ice on the moon? The moon's ice could could be concentrated in places as missions and overlook, look, or buried below the surface where remote, remote instruments can't see it. NASA is hoping, hoping human explorers can re resolve the question. The astronauts who will touch down on the moon in 2020 will be part of the third mission, or Artemis III, five-part series. NASA completed Artemis one one and on mission in 2022, and R2 will carry four astronauts around the moon out landing in late 2024. Two crews are expected to end after Artemis III, with the mission typically scheduled in 28 to 29. The Artemis 3 Creek will be limited to explore on foot, but later missions may be rovers. Since it was launched in, in 2009, the Lunar, lunar Ron, uh, Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO, has the circle moon sending back, back data that warm astronauts about the range that they can and can to encounter. An altimeter measures altitudes and such and such rough, roughness and reflectance of lunar, lunar surface. Pictures from an onboard camera create a explorable detailed map. For, for some, some part of the moon, the resolution of the map can be 10 centimeters, maybe even a little better. Uh, it's estimated, compared with the Apollo days, the accuracy of knowing where you are is, is now made 100 times. That, that, on the basis of their knowledge and the moon's moon photography, NASA is considering, considering third regions where, where Artemis is from land. In, in addition to being near scientifically interesting places, landing sites, will likely need to be flat to accommodate the lander and well will illuminate it, guaranteed to be visible light, and, and able to accommodate a, a relative flat path that astronauts can travel get to and from the lander. You add up all, all the different differences together, list of possible landing sites really starts to narrow down fast.
Safety steering Art Artemis three astronauts will avoid navigating the moon's roughest by staying within a couple mile kilometers of the lander and avoiding slope more than 20 degrees. Even with these constraints, teams won't be won't be avoid areas uh, avoid avoid issues ability. Beside the sun, the sun hits the south pole at a very low angle, and there's very little atmosphere to light. The astronaut will face extremely long, sharp shadows interspersed with the sunlit regions. Combined with the moon's low color contrast, it's been difficult for astronauts to see where they're going. Imagine, imagine that you're at Grand Canyon and it's dusk. It's really hard to see what's in the shadows. This is Geologist Jose Hortato of the University of Texas, El Paso, helps train the astronauts to experience a facsimile of these conditions in a virtual reality at the Pat Johnson Space Center. It, it becomes to see little, little bumps and ridges and even craters until you're, you're right up against them, he said that. Without familiar objects, trees, and buildings, astronauts may find themselves lacking, lacking a sense for a scale of their surroundings. To simulate these conditions, the Artemis crew has been training in the Arizona desert at night using flood, flood light to simulate the low, low end of the sun. The lighting conditions really focus their attention to a more, more narrow area and almost, almost like half blinders on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, they're training the astronauts to use port port of light to analyze rocks accurately, but when lose it's it's that connectivity. The broader region. Artemis astronauts won't have, won't have electronic navigation tools uh, guide them to them make moon lacks GPS or uh, other global navigation satellites. Instead, they ask the astronauts to navigate by, by erecting landmarks or fans on that. I think it might be challenging even though practicing in the virtual reality environment should help. During Apollo 14, uh, similar issues were, were part of what then it asked to find a site called the Crater, despite unknowingly walking within 40 meters of the crater's rim. rim. Shades and advisory astronauts' hel helmets will help them see in the harsh light, said uh, uh, Russell Ralston from uh, Axiom Space. Cameras that object of lighting might might also help to, to see and shed and keeping them in the sun particular to, to the ash path could minimize flare and that maximize visibility. With very little atmosphere to store heat, moon's surface temperature varies widely depending on whether an area an area is illuminated or not. TSRs can be as cold as 460 degrees below zero, zero Fahrenheit, or maybe maybe lower. Okay, okay. Point, we're measuring temperatures that are colder than the surface of Pluto. A member of the team that worked with temperate measuring during him and called the designer that mounted on the reconnaissance orbiter. How they measured, by the way. At the other extreme, the polar reef tilted towards us and reached temperatures of over 80, 300 degrees Kelvin and or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I think those numbers are wrong. Uh, let's see here. It says here, and it continues, it says, as these temperatures are not, not air temperature as measured on Earth, but rather geo temperatures that, that you experience stand next to a, to a fire when a major source of heat or sunlight and light is removed to rapidly drop so that there's very little air to trap the heat. The heat. That means that the astronaut holds 100 degrees more than the dark side. Because rapid temperature pressure swings hard on the human health as well as on electronic instruments, and because it's hard to see the shadow, astronauts will not select to stay in illuminated areas as much as possible. Uh, shadows move rapidly during the, 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 this, the time of the day and the time of the year. How it launches are frequently delayed, meaning mis mission planners are making themselves mapping out new sunlit routes at the last minute. Mis Regardless of Artemis team, teams are needing to keep active acid dark occasionally. Singular, singular drive entering PSTSRs is similar to if astronauts not into a vat with nitrogen in print, but the astronaut suits will allow them to function those temperatures at least two hours, according to Rawls. 
two hours will not be long enough for astronauts to with, with or large PSR stars, or even, but even, but even topographic rough spot spots or millimeters of cross, cross harbor tiny persistent shadows. Water in these small PSRs could indicate that a on the moon actively replenishes substance. Such a discovery would definitely be on the cover of nature and science, and there would be a lot, lot of discussion about it. But It's not clear how astronauts will maximize their, their ability to within the large PSRs, as you said. Scientists have floated some very low possibilities. For example, Earth Sigler said a simple way to avoid voids and spend time in a PSR would, would be to stay edge and sample within it using rake with a long handle. A mission called, called Violet follows the post investigating polar exploration rover which aims to search for water searching starting in late 2024, also provoking reconnaissance, had said. I, I scoured the region for, for evidence of water before the Artemis crew arrives. Viper will hopefully guide their efforts. For in addition to topography, the pull of sentiment may also make navigation difficult for the Art Artemis crew because the ground has been pulled by micro meteors more extensively than the equatorial region where the early Apollo, Apollo last landed. South Pole sediment may be deep, deeper in your grain. Some of the later Apollo missions have landed in an island region with, with similarly soft sediment and it may be around other process. Apparently we know yet, yet the ability is going to affect that how not they're going to be able to walk drive as said. By observing tree tracks with some boulders that have rolled down the, the edges of the crater, some researchers have estimated the depth of layer of loose sediment that covers the south polar region. That sunlit areas around shouldn't be a big problem, their research suggests. Astronauts and rovers are likely to sink in sink in centimeters. Sediment on and below the low slopes, however, over may not be held, held firmly in place, so, so slipping be a problem. In areas that, that alternate between extremely hot, hot sediment gets compacted as it expands the track. SRs, on the other hand, are always very, very cold, so sometimes scientists wonder if there's, there's the ground will be covered in a thick layer of fl fluffy, like powder, powder, out, powder, or no. Should your ass ask not to wear snowshoe shoes? Things are said, as you wonder. wonders. Additional boulder tracks have shown that at least in some South Pole PSRs, the, the lunar rigor is, is at least as compact as the islands or sunlit areas. The Viper shed more light on this question and this KE-5 on ITEX. Despite the challenges, Seagull said if NASA were to send astronauts to moon South Pole tomorrow, they would be safe because engineers know how to land on, they take a front and survive by on lunar surface. If any can remain a pain event that way, where the astronauts will go, how thoroughly they'll be able to explore, and how the light and the quality of the surface will affect their mobility. At her heart, the Artemis mission, the missions are extreme steel geology. Just as on, on Earth, questions and hypotheses will evolve as scientists explore. Furtado said, Ed, and something think on a good early in the exhibition can, can alter the course of the research. The astronauts will need constantly evaluate, be focused, and learn along the way. Even if the Artemis mission does not reveal water, even if, if none of it goes the way the scientists think it will, it will important findings are almost certain to come, come out of the ground. Because now you've got to figure out, okay, what went wrong? It's a scientific process. And that's the article. Uh, I thought that was, that was kind of interesting. I thought I'd share it with you. Okay, let's see here. Let me go ahead and ask, ask if there's any check-ins, or if you have any questions, please, please come and This is Kilo Golf 5 Echo Uniform, David, Paul, Texas. Good D5, BPX, roll point, echo link, link.
Two very good. We picked up two. We got KKG5 EU, David over and over in St. Paul, and WWD5 PX at that spot over in Little St. Paul from both. Okay, next up is, uh, let's see, what's up? And that would be Chess, who's, who's outer space this week. Uh, Chess at KK5JHHA, uh, you are, are up. Well, thank you, Tom. Don't let, let everyone I'm really in mesquite, okay? Yeah, this is Chaz, KF5JHA, and we call this segment of Sky Dynet. What is up? Because it's all about all about what's going on astronomically, likely in the next couple of weeks and, and maybe beyond. That was slide num number two, Night Master. Slide number three. Oh, the cat that's one wandering. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, slide three. Yesterday, on February the 9th, was new moon. So the current phase of the moon is a waxing thing crescent. Today, on day on February the 10th, the, the moon is a perigee, which, which is the moon's orbit, the orbit that is close to the Earth, that is at a distance of 358,088 kilometers. On, on February the 16th, the moon will be at its first quarter phase. On February the 24th, the moon will be full. On, on the 25th, the moon will be at apogee, which is the point in the moon's orbit that is furthest, furthest from the Earth, a distance of 406,112 kilometers. Five masters or slide number four. Now, earlier tonight, if it had been clear, there was a conjunction of the moon Saturn in the west, southwest, western EVI. Strong twilight would have prevented you from seeing it unless you had some, some binoculars. Slide masters, slide number five. On Fe February the 11th, oh, that, that would be tomorrow, there's a conjunction of the moon and the planet Neptune in the west, south, southwestern sky. Now, you'll need a telescope in order to see Neptune. If you're looking for Uranus, uh, you might be able to spot it with a pair of binoculars. Telescope would even be better. We'll talk about that in a few more moments, too. Slide master, slide number for six. On Valentine's Day, February the 14th, conjunction of the, of the moon and the bright planet Jupiter that's, that's in a southwestern evening sky. Jupiter's that bright thing, thing that's in the southwest right now, just after sunset. At, at, well, when it's on the slide, slide, mass slide number seven on February the 15th, there's a junction of the moon, the moon, and then at Uranus in the south, southwestern evening sky. You'll be able to see it with a pair of pair, but, I, but again, a telescope, it's a star map, you know, dot in, in the field of, is, is the, the point. Slide mass slide number eight. On February the 16th, there's a junction of the moon and the, the Star cluster, the Pleiades, also known as M4045, in the southern evening sky. That's beautiful. You should, you should be able to see the moon and the, the Pleiades uh, uh, together, just with your, your two eyes. But again, binoculars going to be help, helpful with the police. Slaster, slide number nine. On Feb February the 20th, there's a conjunction of the moon and Pollux in the southeastern evening sky. Now, Pollux is one of two bright, bright stars in the kind of conjunction of Gemini, Pollux, Pollux and Castor are the two, two of them, uh, the, the Ted's of Gemini twins. Slide master, master slide in 10. On February the 2nd, there's a conjunction of Venus and Mars in the east, southeastern, early morning sky. Uh, just a few mornings ago, it was actually clear. I could see Venus and the moon, and crescent, crescent moon, see each other in the, in the morning. It was great, great to see. If you missed it, well, you just have to get up early, early enough to see this kind of thing. Slide master, slide number 11. On February the 24th, there's just a conjunction of the moon and the minor planet, or also, also as an asteroid, Juno, in the east, eastern evening sky. Most of the time, with the, with the asteroids, you need to have a, at least a pair of binoculars, binoculars to see. I've seen the, the asteroid Vesta from inside the, the city with just a pair of binoculars. So, try it. It would be interesting to see some asteroids from in, inside the city. Slide master, slide number 12. On Mar March the 24th, there will be a penumbral eclipse of the moon. The, the Earth's shell has two parts, a darker part called the um umbral, lighter part is called the penumbra. Around 96 percent of the moon will go into the penumbra during this, and the moon brightness will only be dimmed just slightly. The eclipse be begins at 11.53 p.m., that would be on March the 24th, 
2.14 a.m. on March 25th will be the eclipse maximum, again, 96% of them being inside the penumbra. Uh, it looks slight, slightly lighter on one side than the normal, but it's going to be kind of hard to, to tell what's kind of eclipse. At 4.32 uh, a.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time, the eclipse will end when the moon leaves the penumbra. penumbra company. Slide number 13, please. Now on April the 7th, there's a conjunction of the moon and Venus in the east morning sky. There is an occultation of Venus by the moon again during the daytime. That's the, the time. Hmm. An occultation occurs when the moon moves in between the planet Venus and the, and the Earth, which blocks us from our field of view. You'll be able, able to observe the event with just, just your two eyes. But the others will be help. Be very careful not to look at the sun with binoculars. The moon is going to be close to the sun, and Venus is going to be close to the sun, so you've got to be careful. The dis disappearance of this will occur, occur at 11, uh, uh, 7, 34 a.m. Central Daylight Light Time from the Brookhaven campus. It'll vary by a few, a few minutes from the Metroplex. The reappearance will happen at 11, 45, 39 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Now, a picture that if you're looking at the video version of Sky, the picture, the picture of Venus next to the moon, moon, just before uh, time, oh, that, oh, that was taken by me. That's the dame occultation that happened on December the 7th in 2015. Hmm, interesting. Slide, my master, slide number 14, please. Remember, we have another solar eclipse coming up in less than two months. A solar eclipse is when the moon is in between the Earth and the Earth. And for a few lucky people on Earth, blocks out some or all of the sun from our field of view. Slide master, slide number 15. Okay, the, the big event happens on April 8th. That's the total solar eclipse for us here in North Texas. From Brookhaven campus, the sun will be completely blocked out for three minutes, 21 minutes, between 1.41 and 1.44 p.m. at Central Daylight Time. During that time, come call to the town, you'll be able to see stars in the sky. sky. Just that we're evening twilight. It's not like going to be completely dark, but, but it'll appear like twilight. The next, next total solar eclipse after that, visible in North Texas, which is one of the year 2317 on July the 9th. Put that, put that on there. July the 9th. 2317. So this, this total solar eclipse is, is going to be a very big deal because this it all happens about once every 300 years in North Texas. Downtown Dallas Hotel is booked for a couple of months now. Um, and and um, downtown Dallas will, will be closed that day. day. Some streets will be because, well, well they're going to have an eclipse fest festival. Traffic is, is going to be easy that day. In a school district is closing on that day for the eclipse. I'll show here some other others will be happening that day because of the eclipse. I would not plan plan travel very much around around that day. Just look look eclipse maybe from from one of the Dallas Dallas College campuses. And this is Cat Five J J J the Skynet Fly Fly Masters number sixteen. Okay, so, so do any of you out there in radio have a question, question or maybe need a, need a fill on some, some information or just, just a general astronomy question? Come now, now with your call and if you have a question or fill. Bob, WD55X. Bobby, you're over there on Echo Lane. Come on now with your uh, question or with something that you more information on. Okay, I'll add to this conversation because of this active map for this uh, eclipse. It's, uh, it's at uh, mandate.com. Um, Slash ellipse slash map slash slash twenty twenty four dash April dash eight. 
it's an interactive map where you follow that path and see on the map that you, that you can down to your area. Thank you very much, Bobby. I actually use one that uh, you can find the link for on NASA website. NASA has a lot of information at the NASA website, nasa.gov, and the search for eclipses. There's there's a sub page and a, and a eclipse page on the solar eclipse page. There's there's links back to one in an interactive map. That's the one that I usually use because it has, has much more detailed information, and you can can get down to the read level if you want want to. If you click in the right places, it'll tell you the exact circumstances of that location on the surface of the Earth. Here, so thank you for sharing that. I use time and date all the time for information about about size and sets and twilight full, nautical and astronomical twilights. So that very useful website site. People who don't know about that. Time and date, date, what you need to go to. Thank you again, Bobby. I pre appreciate that. All right, all right. As the moon moon waned last week, we, uh, so did the, these words for segment of, Sky, of Skynet. Stay safe, keep, keep well, pray for our world. See you where humans live. And until next time, well, actually, I'll be doing another segment on Skynet in a few minutes. Keep looking up so you know what's up. And this is K5, Jeff JJ. Sending it back, back to our control. That would be Tom, Tom K5, IX. And thank you, Chad. And back to you in a little bit. We also have Mr. Carolyn's Constellation of the Week. And thank, thank you, Bobby, for the information. I should I suffice my, my help? I'm going to go explore a little bit later. Later. And this is KE5TX Net Control tonight. Skynet. Uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and pause, see if there's any additional check ins at this point. If you'd like to join us, please come with your call. I'll sign your name. We're transmitting. Submitting. Got all the usual suspects checked in. Next up is East Exploration and State History. This week, this is handled by Kelly, K5 KTX. Miss, Miss Kelly, the net is yours. Hey, hey, Tom, this is K5 KTX, and this week it's going to be the Alma Ball history. Well, last Sunday, okay, February the 4th, was the 57th anniversary of the Lunar Orbiter 3. This is great timing because the same, same week it happened to acquire a few of the actual long format prints from the Lunar Orbiter images. The Lunar Orbiter program was a series of five uncrewed missions launched from 1966 through 1967 intended to collect Apollo landing sites by map mapping the moon coast. They provided the first lunar surface which was mapped from photographs Taking the resolution of two meters or, or better. The first three missions dedicated to imaging 20 potential crewed lunar landing, landing sites selected based on Earth-based observations. These, these were long at low inclination orbits. The four fifth missions were, were devoted to a broader scientific objective and, and were flown in, in high altitude polar orbits. Lunar or Orbiter 4 photographed the entire, entire side and 9% of the far side. And Lunar Orbiter 5, 5 did the far side coverage and acquired medium, medium, twitter, and high, and high 2 meter resolution images of 3660 selected areas. The Lunar Orbiter program, program was made by NASA's Langley Search Center. An ingenious, ingenious image system which consists of a dual lens camera, a film processing unit, a read scanner, and a filming apparatus. Both lenses, a 610 millimeter narrow angle high resolution or HR lens, and an 80 millimeter wide angle media resolution or HR lens, place, place their flank exposures on, on a single roll of 70 meter film. The pieces of the two cameras were coincident so that the air image in the HR frames were centered within the MR frame area. So the film was moved during exposure to compensate for the space space velocity, which was estimated by, by an electrical sensor. The film was then, then processed and, and the images transmitted back to Earth. Earth. During the lunar orbiter mission, first pictures of Earth as a whole were taken. 
beginning with Earth's rise over the lunar surface by Lunar Orbiter 1 in August of 1966. Together, the orbiters return 2,180 high resolution and 882 medium resolution frames. The lunar orbiter photographs were connected to Earth as analog data after, after onboarding of the original film into a series of strips. The data is written to magnetic tape and to, and to film. The film data were used to create handmade mosaics of lunar orbiter frames. Due to the large size, our frames were, were divided into three sections or subframes. Sub large format prints from mosaics were, were created and several copies were distributed across, across the U.S. NASA Im image and data libraries known as Regional Plan Planetary Information Facility. For many years, these, these images have been the basis of much of lunar scientific research. Because, because they were aimed at low to moderate sun angles, the orbiter photographic mosaics are particularly useful for, for study morphology of lunar topographic graphic features. The ori original 20 by 24 inch prints were used at the main space craft center in Houston while the Apollo missions were abandoned in the early 1970s when the Apollo missions ended. And now, I, I am not owner of five of these large format prints. One for Lunar Orbiter 2 and a set of, set of four Lunar Orbiter, Orbiter 4 one, one medium resolution and three, three high resolution subframes. Also in space history this past week, beginning with, with February 4th, 1906, Tombo was born. Dissatisfied with spot telescopes, Tombo used spare farming machinery to part of his own equipment. His observation-based sketches of Mars and Jupiter impressed the staff at Lowell Observatory so much that they offered him a job, a jo job where he'd make the dis discovery of a lifetime. On February 18, 1930, thousands of, thousands of hours examining photograph plates of the night sky, the 24-year-old home will take the elusive planet X, now known as a dwarf planet Pluto. Although he is best remembered for finding Pluto, he will catalog thousands of asteroids, various stars and galaxies. He died, he died January 17, 1997. Some of those ashes are the New Horizons spacecraft, which flew, flew by Pluto on July 14, 2015. February the 5th, 1971, the Apollo 14 Lunar Module and Ares touched down on the moon. The crew, led by the first American in space, Alan Shepard, inc included Edgel as Lunar Module Pilot and Stuart Stuarusa and Module Pilot. They were tasked exploring the Fra Mission. The mission originally assigned to Apollo 13. Over the course of two moon walks, lasting approximately four hours each, Shepard and Mitchell co collected 90 pounds of rock, Soil to return to Earth. It was, it was also mission at the end of the second moon walk that Al Shepard would enter into space legend as, as the first one to hit a, hit a ball in space. After attaching a 6 6 iron to the handle of a lunar sample collection device, Shepard fired off several shots before returning to the Antares. February the 6th, 1995, the shuttle Dual Discovery approached the Russian station Mir and completed a fly-around, marking the first shuttle rendezvous with Mir as part of the shuttle Mir Mir Ram. The mission, CS-63, was the first first of the year and on board was Russian cosmonaut Vladimir Dov. The second cosmonaut to fly of the U.S. space facial as part of the U.S.-Russian agreement on space cooperation. After the closest point of approach, Discovery Commander James Weatherby said, As we are bringing our spaceships closer together, we are bringing our nations closer together. The next time we approach, we shake your hand, your hand and together we will lead our, lead our world into the next millennium.
February the 7th, 1984, astronaut Bruce McGillis performed the first untethered tethered spacewalk. This, this happened space shuttle mission, mission S-41BB. Bruce used the manned maneuvering unit, or MU, a sort of jet propulsion backpack. Bruce was not only the first person to use MMU, but what was instantly involved in the design, design development with Ed Witsit from NASA and Ballendonk from the Martin Marietta Corporation. McCandless, Witsit, and Ballendonk were awarded the Collier Trail 1984 for the development of the, of the MMU. Bruce passed away in late December 2017 and was buried at his alma mater, the U U.S. Naval Academy, on January 16, 2018. Son, Bruce McCandless III, who, who, by the way, is very active on the Facebook group, group Space Hitters, if you have, um, if you've heard of that group. He, he wrote a book about his father and his untethered flight called Winters All Around, and he will be doing a talk and, and signing at Tulsa Air and Space Museum on Friday, Friday Saturday, February 23rd, and 2020. Tulsa, it is only four hours away, if you're interested in going, going. On February the 7th, back in 1999, NASA's Stardust mission launch. launch. Primary goal of the mission was to collect samples from the comet Wild 2 and turn them to Earth. Earth. The team had expected that the sample contain material in the formation of the early solar system, present ice for, for billions of years. Indeed, researchers found what they expected, but with a surprise. Comet, comet Wild had formed under extremely hot, hot conditions. It turns, turns out that comets are not only made up of ice from the outer, outer solar system, but all materials formed from near the sun and in an environment hot enough to, to evaporate bricks. February 8, 1974, Skylab 4 crew returned turn from the third final mission to the first U.S. space station. Skylab 4 was launched on November 16, 1973 with command and service modules CSM-118. The three-person crew, Gerald P. Carr, William R. <laughs> spent 80, 84 days in orbit. The mission included the observation of the comet Kahootik, among numerous experiments. The crew completed 1,214 Earth orbits and four extravehicular activities, totaling 22 hours, 13 in 1975. On February the 8th, 1992, Ulysses probe arrived at Jupiter to perform a swing by maneuver in order to establish an orbit around the sun. The Ulysses mission was designed to study the sun from, from holes, a vantage point not at, at, at access for five years. Ex exceeding all expectations, the UCs collected in invaluable data on the helio for 20 years, allowing scientists to map previously inaccessible parts of the heliosphere. Though not its primary objective, the Jupiter flyby led to six significant discoveries, especially about the magnetic, magnetic field of the largest planet, planet in our system. On February the 8th, back in 2013, the Curiosity rover drilled into a portion of Martian dock, collecting the first sample, sample ever seen from the interior of the planet. This is to a rock named Klein, in, in memory of an MSL de deputy pro project manager, produced evidence that conditions on Mars were workable for microbial life. KKTX. We're going to round out with um, several astronaut birth birthdays that we uh, celebrate for the past week, beginning on, on February 5th, 1947. Mary Clee, who, who was of space shuttle missions SCS-61 and SCS-30. Also on February 5th, 1976, Andrew Morgan, who was part of, part of the Expedition 60 61 and, and 62 missions. February the 5th, 1984, our, one, of our, one of our astronauts, Johnny Kim, who has not flown yet, yet is on the short list for the Artemis, uh, that would be the, the three or four mission, the one, one that's going to land the moon. February the 7th, 1932, Alfred Warden was on Apollo, Apollo 15. February the 7th, 1963, Heidi Marie 
definition Piper, Space Shuttle Missions STS-115 and 126, for the 9th, 19th Peg Pegasus, Space, Space Shuttle Mission STS-11 and 113 as part of Expedition 5, she was also part of Expedition 16, and Expedition 50, C1, and 52, and her most recent flight last year on the Axiom Mission 2. And finally, there is a 10th, 1968, Garrett Reis Reisman, Space Shuttle Mission S-123-124, mission as, as part of Expedition 16 and 17, and SCS-132. And that's all I've got this evening. I will send it back to you, Tom, this is day 5 KPS. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Appreciate your presentation. A lot of interesting stuff. This is KE5 IDEX and control tonight at Skynet. Uh, I'll go ahead and if there's any additional you just check if you'd like to join, join please count with your call sign, call sign, and your name, where you're transmitting from. Go ahead and move, move to the next one of the net, and it's time for for Chad again uh, for Miss Carolyn Flynn's constant of, of the week. So Chad, KFIHA, net, net, your. Thank you. Um, yes, this is the chat. KFIHJ. Miss Car Miss Carolyn's constant of the week it is named in honor of Silent Silent Key K KC5 OZTP contributed to this kind of each week from almost the beginning in 2012 until May of 2018, with a detailed look at one particular constellation each week. Now, there's about 52 visible constellations seen in text te throughout the year, out of the 88 total number of constellations. So, Ms. Carolyn covered the entire sky as I have seen over Nexus in a year. And in her honor, we've continued that tradition of a constellation per week and name this after her. Carolyn's constellation this week is Auriga, the charioteer, or sometimes called oldest bird. Auriga, the charioteer, is a constellation known since ancient times. There are a number of stories and winds that Auriga has associated with it. Uh, when the Taylor was introduced, uh, the, the fourth chariot into Athens. Wow. Auriga has also been said to represent the ill-fated charioteer of King Onimus, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name, who ultimately died, died as a result of the invo involvement plot to betraying. Now the most important part of Sky Ninet, and the reason, the reason why I'm saying I'm from outer space because I've been told these jokes are out of this world, the jokes of the week. Slide master, slide number 19. Okay, it's appropriate to either boo or hit. Uh, don't hit your radio, but you can throw things at it. I suppose don't actually hit it yet. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Try to be impartial in chariot races, but I have to admit, fill in the blank here. What's going, going, going to be said next? I try to be impartial in chariot races, but I have to admit, I am with her. Is it her? I'm, I'm, never mind. Okay. okay. What did the chariot say after uh, being the Red Sea? What did the chariot say after the, the part of the Red Sea? I'm all washed up. What did the left chariot wheel say to the right chariot wheel? I'll see, see you over. And the last one tonight. What what do you call a chariot pony when it off? You call it a little horse. Slash slide number twenty, please. The brightest star in Auriga is called Capella, which means goat or, or the little goat. It's the brightest star uh, in Auriga. Auriga is usually depicted with the mother goat, goat, kids on the left shoulder and then the arm. Remember, it's a, sh a shepherd 
Or a ch charioteer. Okay, in this instance, it's, it's, it's the ship. Okay. Uh, so, again, a ragged is usually, usually with the mother goat and her kids uh, on his left shoulder and her arm, and Capella representing the goat. The net triangle of Eagle of Elon, Ada, and Zeta represent the kids, it's the little goats. Color is actually, actually a little star system with two main components, that's A and Capella B, being a yellow G type stars that are giants. One estimate has them at diameters about 7 and, and 13 times that of Earth. Earth. They, they orbit each other at a distance of 60 million miles and are therefore too close to each other to split with even, even the most telescopes. We see them spectroscopically. There are two more components of the Capellian system. Uh, two faint red, red dwarfs that orbit each other. The pair of, of red dwarfs orbits the, the main at a, at a distance of 11,000 astronomical units, or 0.17 light years. The entire Capellian system lies about 42.8 light years from the Earth. Theta Araga uh, is a light A type star, star, 166 light years away. It's no, known for its strong magnetic field and its, its abundance of silicon, chromium, and, and iron. It's also a double star that is noted to being a difficult one to split, requiring good optics and a good seeing on, on a night. The atmosphere as well. Well, the canyon is 7.2 G type star that uh, near the twin of our star sun, separated from the primary by only four arc seconds. So that, that's kind of a close double. And this is KF5J Genesis this is Skynet. Slide master, slide number 21, please. So at Aurora, we've got to, got to talk about three different open clusters because that's one of the main features that you can see in it. M M36 is it, known for its uh, O clusters, of course. Of course, M6 uh, it has three of the of them. M36 is an easy to, easy to find a cluster. Uh, it's the first that we have to examine in this uh, sequence. And Deep Eye Wonders, Walter Scott Houston wrote that, that this cluster has about 660 stars. But it looks pretty sparse compared to, to M37 that we'll talk about in a few moments. Stephen James Amir, Amir on the book The Mezzi Objects, writes, writes that later members of, of the clusters, a number of observers note a crop cro formed at the central stars in the cluster. Jalas, uh, in his book The Mezzi Alvin, Alvin also that the outstreamers of, of the faint stars give the cluster a crab like. -like uh -huh. We've heard of the, the crapula before. That's a nebula, not a star cluster. Slide master slide number 22. M37 of the three Mesa open clusters in Auriga, M M36, 37, M38. Most most agree that M37 is the striking. Walter Houston said that it's the prettiest of the three. Burnham uh, and Burnham Celestial Book wrote that it was actually considered to be the finest of the three open clusters in Auriga. Stephen G. Samira wrote that Telescopically, M37 is a much, much more wonderful a sight sight than E36 or E8. Uh, Malice described it as the finest open clusters in the heavens. M37 is the rich, uh, is a richer cluster than M36, having about 150 bright, bright stars, more than, than twice than M30, 30 including, including all the fainter star stars. The total uh, uh, population of M37 might be, be more than 500 stars. Also, so unlike 36, which contains mostly blue-white stars, 37 has white stars and even some red giants. A number of different uh, authors author have noted that a not named red star, star Durham wrote about, about out near the center like a ruby on a field of diamonds. Oh, interesting. Slide master, slide number 23, please. The final of the three open open clusters, M thirty A eight, in terms of cellular density, M thirty eight eight falls away in M thirty six and thirty seven. Is about one hundred to one hundred and twenty stars greater than M thirty six is sixty, but well short of M thirty seven's estimated five hundred star stars. Like M thirty six, a number of other observers over the years have noted a, a cross formed in central stars of the cluster M thirty eight. 
Mr. Webb, Houston, James O'Meara, and Burnham Celestial, Celestial Handbook. So notes that old Burnham was, quote, Webb. Um, John, John Mellis noticed that uh, now the class classic four unitron on telescope while observing it and for the, the book of the media album, he says, oh, the three open cl cluster, very similar in the binoculars, all the binoculars scope, M36, 37, 38, are, are quite different in an appearance in a telescope. And I, I encourage all of you, if you're out on a guide with just, with just binoculars, scan the side of a right guy, you should be able to spot out the star cluster with binoculars, so there's very easy. And, and this is K5JHA in Skynet, slide master, slide number 24. There are a few more ast astronomical observing pro program objects in the constellation of Orion, Cherry, Tear, or Orson the Shepherd, We're giving you just a sampling of some of those objects. The Astronomical League has, at last count, 77 different different observing programs, most of which have about 100 objects in them. So, if you observe 10 different different objects in an observing program, program each month, you can earn, earn an observer certificate and a pen in about a year from the Astronomical League. Slide Master, slide number 25. And that is Miss Carolyn's Constellation of the Week, a regular cheer tier, or sometimes called Shepherd. I want friends Dave Hutch, Dave Hutch, and Dennis Harwell fell for the recent words that steal uh, for all the sky objects. And uh, for every guy that I also see you times the website constellation com for information. Now next week, we'll take a look at something else that you probably never heard of, Canis, Canis Major, the big dog. Oh, oh, maybe you have heard of it, of it, yeah. And this is KFJHA, -J -J, setting up our net control, KE5IVICX. Hey, three, everyone. It's all yours, Tom. Very good. Thank you, Chess, and thank you for doing this every week for 52 weeks a week. I have pretty close to that. Sometimes, sometimes their app is fun stuff up for the research of the creature. In-depth analysis and constellation. And this is KE5 ICS, a controllable tonight, Skynet. At, see, it's 10 15. I have time to tell you about, about the launches, which is before kind of going on to the next few cool se section. Uh, what do we have coming up? Coming up? We have uh, the IM 1 launching, that's the base at South Falcon 9 rocket. We'll launch the IM-1 mission to Nova Sea Lander, built and owned by Intuitive Machines. We talked about IM-1 a couple of weeks ago. Attempt to deliver a sweet suite of specific payloads to the surface of the moon. NASA's commercial lunar load services program. We have on February 14th, Valentine's Day, there will be the USS-1-2024 essentially launching uh, the uh, opening at 5.30 p.m. and they don't have an actual time. SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral. This will be a Falcon 9 launch, launch into the U.S. Space Force and an missile to agency. Part of the third order used for the National Health Security Space Base to launch contract, contract with the X. We have on uh, February 14th, 15th overnight is EP-4, which will launch from the Shinnapu Launch Complex in Tanagashi Center. Uh, the AXA agency is preparing for a second test flight of its H3 rocket following the failure of Conspace engine in March 2023. And it is dubbed H3 TF2, flight 2. The flight will feature a vehicle evaluation payload of 4 for purposes of demonstration. Uh, uh, Jack Layden is in December 23. It will collide on the excess launch capability of that rocket by providing launch and orbit insertion opportunities for two small secondary payloads, CCE, and here's that, that, no information, what's, what's the word. Also, at the same time, we have the Soyuz Progress S-26 launching from Balcom Air Code Cosdrome in Kazakhstan. This will be the 87th Progress Cargo to Road to the International Space Station. The engine uses the rocket in the Soyuz 2-1 uh, configuration. Then we have on February 17th, GLV FF-14 and InSat-3 test. This will launch on a, uh, a 
gas clouds and send turn them into stars. That a missing link link explains why these these first guys are so much so much farther than expected. Silk Steam predicts the Young Universe had two phases. During the first phase, high speed outflows from black holes accelerated star formation, and then in the, in the second phase, the outflows slowed down. A few hundred million years after the fifth big bang, glass gas collapsed because of the supernatural black hole magnetic storms, and new storms were born at a rate far exceeding that observed of billions years later, and no one could see silk said it. The creation of the soap slowed down because these outflows transitioned into a, a seat of energy conservation, he said, re reducing the gas available to stars, uh, to stars and galaxies. We thought that in the be beginning, galaxies formed when a glass, ga giant gas cloud collapsed, Silk ex explained. The big surprise is that there was, there was a sea in the middle of the cloud, a big black hole. And that had helped rapidly turn the inner part of that cloud out into star at a rate much greater than what than we had ever expected. It's the first galaxy sees incredibly bright. The team expects future well weather scopes observations with with more priest counts of stars in, in supermassive black holes in the early universe will help con help confirm the galations. Scope expects these observations will also help scientists piece together more clue to the evolution of the universe. The big question is, what 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 are getting sun so is one star in one hundred billion in the in the Milky Way galaxy. See, there's a massive black sitting in the middle too. What's the connection between the two two, he said. Within a year we will have so much better to data and a lot of our questions will be will be to get answers. Also, no, well, no, this is my names. I'm going to stop there. Um, this, this is in staley.com. So back to Jeanette. This is WB5 O.L. Very good. Thank you, Brenda. And thanks for the presentation. Connect. This is, well, I already, I already do that. So next next up, uh, we'll go ahead and do uh, a couple of couple things. I'm going to that way. Like, like, Passes over the next couple of days. Uh, the ISS have got a couple of good passes, actually two. Uh, February 14th, uh, minus minus 25 to 661 AM. And we'll point at 426 uh, And then uh, fall to the east of northeast at 606. Then we have on February 16th, uh, this is a great, great uh, minus 3.9 magnitude. This is going to be blazing across the sky if the weather will allow it. 6.02 a.m. Um, at southwest at 20 degrees. Uh, it'd be just out of shadow, I think. But then it will reach directly overhead at 6.04 at 83 degrees to the northwest. West, and it will fall to the northeast at 6.07. Okay, so uh, we Next up is this Chinese space station, Tiangong. Uh, uh, this one has uh, uh, three passes. I guess they're really good. Uh, yeah, three passes. We have we have one on February 16th at minus 1.33 magnitude at six o'clock in the morning out of the north northwest. Reach reaches size 42 degrees at 60, 6.60 in the, in the morning and over to the east at 6.04. February 17th has, has a good pass. Uh, uh, there's actually two, but the better one, one is second one, minus 1.9 magnitude to uh, the west northwest at 663. You're going to reach the highest point at 636, at 54 degrees. And it'll fall to the southeast, 630, 39. And then February 8th, minus 1.8 magnitude at 5333 in the morning. It'll, uh, this one's coming out of Shashab at 63 degrees, the highest point. And it, will, and it will be southeast at 536. So there, so there you have it. That information is, of course, available at, at heavensabuff.com. So you can go there, plug in, in your percent or your date, which, which is rather convenient. And if you get saved, you can get all the same information here that I have. There is also a, 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 a complement of amateur radio satellite, satellite as well. So if you're, so if you're maybe making contact, you'll have to find, find frequencies, but it, it will find heaven, heaven, up, dot, dot com to find the information 
sky for you to see uh, points or antennas. This is KE5 ICX and control for tonight's Skynet. We have two minutes left. I'll go ahead and ask if there's any, any additional questions or, or questions. Please come to come now. Normal, normal state. Okay, okay, uh, tonight we have had 22 check in for participating here, including, including myself. Thanks to all those who checked in. We hope to join us here next week, next Saturday night at 9 p.m. because we've got astronomy space and space exploration as odd as net, net, high is never the limit. We're always, always looking for control stations for this and all the other DARDS. If you'd like to try your hand at this, Send an, e send an email to net at, at wfc.org. You can follow pop topics and descriptions on this net and astronomy in general. I go to Facebook and X as well as audio and video streams, video archives, and other useful internet resources. I go to the club web's website, wfc.org, to include solutions of net. Until next Saturday night, this I'm, is I'm the live in India, the X-ray, and I'll be closing at 2229 local time. Returning Peter briefly, over to small oper operation. We will be back in about five minutes to just discuss, discuss the Afterglow Movie Net movie. Sign uh, watching, viewing is to have, ro have ro rocket will travel the Three Douches' first feature to film, and it, and it goes to space. You be the judge whether this is a good, bad, good, bad, different, good. Three Stooges movies move, not so good. Three Stooges movie, uh, they, they, it, it goes on forever. At any rate, we'll be back in about, in about five minutes. Seven, three, three, everybody. Else. See you another time. This is Katie from Ice Dev Seven Clear.
Okie dokie. Well, I'm back again. Uh, geez, geez, can't get enough of me, can ya? This is, this is the app movie net. I, I am AE5 ICFX. Night movie it is the ever popular the Have, have Rock Will Travel from 1959. An American science fiction comedy film. That's what it says here. Reserve Re- Columbia Pictures starring the Three Stooges. This one has Mo Howard, Howard Blair Fine. The new edition, Joe, Joe Dorita, better known as Curly Joe. Yeah, I know there were two guys named. One was Curly, the other one was Joe. Well, this one's called Curly Joe. The film was produced to capitalize on the fusion's late, late 1953 surgeons in for cast featured Anisa and, and Robert Blair. You, you know him I, from time to time. So let me tell you the plot, and then I'll tell you about the net. It's just the Stooges are their janitors working for, for space and were accidentally blasted Venus and their ATOC talking to corn. A, a giant fire eating tarantula and an alien computer that has destroyed all, all on the planet. I don't know how that's possible because we have a tarantula and a talking unicorn, but what I know, it creates three evil robot duplicates of the Stooges. When the boys reach, boys reach home, triumphant, a party is held in, held in there on it comes a me- melee in a stooge one manner complicated by the arrival of the, the evil rock. An epilogue shows the three stooges riding on a rocket and in space while singing and ends Mo being hit with hit with pies by Larry and Curly Curly Joe. Now, although not built as such, the film was not the first star feature for the three students. Their first feature film was Rockin' and the Rockies in 1945. It was also the only feature film with Mole, Larry, and Curly. Curly. The three students also starred in the 51 film Old Graders with George O'Brien and during the Champfort era and had sporting roles in several 930 films when were affiliated with Ed, Ed Healy, including Dancing Lady, Joan Crawford, with Joan Crawford, Crawford Jim Cable, Robert Fetchley, and Fred Fred especially a list of actors there. The, the space whole theme of Have Rocket Will Travel Travel was once in the 1950s. Stooges story film three, three shorts for Columbia be based on this theme. Then they were to ship Outer Spacers and and Blinder Taffy. These would appear in a, in another they would appear in another space themed comedy from nineteen sixty two, the three stooges in a bit. Original cut. The stooges were the only three people shown after the rocket rocket launch scene early in film. But the studio insisted that Hardy scene in order to introduce the other character. As a critical re- response, Mo Howard ex- expressed his like for the film in 1973, he stated he didn't care much for the half rocket will tra- travel. It was contrived a lot, a lot of eyes were dragged in at the tail end, and not only that, the unicorn of corpus and all of that. Uh, so there you have, you have it. I guess the one crit- critical response Mo Howard for himself. That's all I got for you in that one. Uh, so, uh, hmm, let's see, Echo Lane completely evacuated, so this may be a very, very lonely at the night night of what could happen. Uh, go ahead and then take checks. Once they get, get checked, we will discuss the bot, followed by characterization, if it is, uh, followed by special effects and anything we missed on the first two rounds. So, I will go ahead and take check-ins. Uh, please come with your call sign, your, your name, too. We, we will ask questions about, about the region. So let's begin. Please come, come with your call, your name, and did you see Have Rocket? We'll try. Kilo India Fox, Juliet, Mike, Thomas, and Lewis. No, I didn't see the film, and, and I don't so much the three stooges as about, about the two three stooges. Okay, I, geez, this may be bad, worse than I, than I thought. I got KI5 I, I, ACM, Thomas, and Euless. I agree with, with you on that. And I, Roger, rock, did not see the film. Additional checks, please come out. Well, 
Whiskey 5 Oscar Zulu Lima Lima. This is Linda, and I did see the, this movie, and for some reason I didn't get blamed with this one. I don't understand it. November Victor 555 Fox, Virginia, in Fort Worth. Yes, I, I saw them. Kilo 900 Kilo. Sean, I'm from Fort Worth. I did see them in movie. WB550, Brenda, and Dallas, she, she saw the film, NB55S, we're going to Fort Worth, yes, she saw the film, KB9SOK, Sean, and Fort Worth, yes, yes, he saw the film, any additional check-ins, please, now. A quick one, lonely one, I'm not sure. So, as promised, I will ask questions of Thomas, as he is the only one who did not, did not see them. But I, I, I do remember his com comments, and he just made a, uh, about the, the third stooge. So, Thomas, Thomas KI55CM, please tell us who is your favorite third stooge from GE5 Ice. Yeah. Well, well, to paraphrase phrase the good curly curliness next to God godliness. Sweet! <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Curly died of a stroke, so they brought back Chip, who most people don't know, was actually the original mem member of the troop. With which he was Ms. Mo's brother when they were a vaudeville act, before they ever went on film. After that, it, it just goes down hell. Uh, they got uh, Joe made no sense, and then, well, I think it was Joe Better, and then it was Curly Joe Dorita. And, uh, Moford, Mo, speaking of interview, there was a, and I, and I forget the name, but it was a black gentleman who appeared to have the big eyes, appeared in, in several future shorts, and Mo had said that if it hadn't been for the races in Hollywood, could have added him to the Stooges, and the act probably would, would have gone on to the 70s. Anyway, KI5 JCM, back to next. Interesting. Thomas, are you an aficionado of three stooges? You seem to have insider insider knowledge. I say swingly, but uh no, I just have a little love trivia and I've picked that up from here and there and there. Okay, well I thought I'd ask ask. I have at work I have a couple of, a couple of uh, co-workers who are three stooges nuts. They love, love stooges, and they're always talking about them. Now, me, not, not so much. I, I like the stooges, and I re remember, you know, uh, uh, the reelers and running, running them on uh, UH television and Kai Broadcasting. WKBD TV, and it was always in the afternoon at 4.30 on Channel 15. So, uh, and they ran that and that for years and years and years. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's hear Brenda, WWB5OZL. Well, Brenda, what did you think, think about the thoughts that you did to see them of Have Rock at Will Travel? Is this one of the finest science fiction comedies of all time or something else from KE5 ICF? This is WB5OZL. I'll have to admit this, this is my very first three stooges. Yeah, I'm a new baby. Uh, I don't know anything about them, except there's three of them, and they're stooges, and uh, a lot of slapstick comedy. I've never been, been compelled to seek out before, or nor anybody dare suggest that, that we could go on. But I, I, I was kind of pleasantly uh, surprised, and I actually kind of enjoyed it. You know, it's just kind of, of just accept, accept that it's dumb and stupid, and and it's no sense, but that's okay. They kind of don't like them in their own way. They, um, uh, are well-meaning, usually. 
Um, the plot, you know, it's pretty, pretty simple. It, um, the, it, you know, I, how did accident accidentally take for Venus is kind of far-fetched. Um, a lot of it was pretty far-fetched. But, but uh, you know, it wasn't a whole lot worse than a lot of sci-fi movies we've seen, to be honest. Alright, I'll turn it back to Nat, wv 5 ozl 5 gzcm com. Thomas, go ahead. Okay, and uh, your homework is to seek out the, the three little beers. I repeat, the three, three little beers. It might, might be one of the all-time best do just short sorts. And it has the genius, and I use that term somewhat light, lightly, curly. Ah, uh, KI5, okay, okay, jump back to net. net. I'll have to look that up. Uh, okay. Uh, my, my forte, my favorite uh, uh, comedy uh, team was Stan Laurel, Laurel and Ollery. So my, so my, my loyalties are with them. They're, they're routine, and I know their film film. Modern, though, but, but, but I do not. Three little, I will, I'll, I'll check it out, and I, I know Brett is right now. She's turning the channels on her TV set, looking for it to see if it's on. Doesn't quite get that whole thing of thing about a television vision, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll get po point in the right direction. Oh, okay, next is Virginia nd 5 f Virginia. What do you think of our, our fine fine? Have a rocket will travel from 1959, starring the two point three students from from T five I see. Tom, Tom, uh. News that I took at the end of Skynet has helped me be weak enough for this. This, um, and and then I'll, I'll insert my thought, thoughts on third stooge. Um, I I when I was younger, the three stooges always came on early in the morning. They were always, were always on right cartoons, so I did see quite a bit of them when I when I was young, but. I um, but wasn't wasn't like a super fan. That they were something that was kind of ubiquitous. So they were always just, just kind of there, and I was familiar with them. And I'm sure there were ones that I saw several times. Um, they seemed to every film they were in a, were in a different position somewhere, you know, doing something different, so they could have a, have a you know, they they seemed rather itinerant. But you know, they were at a new new job that they could mess up. So. Um, they all three always work, work together somewhere, and um, I, the, um, one of the oldest things I own, as, as far as memorabilia and just personal things that I'll, I'll probably never, never get rid of, is Three Stooges coffee mug that my sister bought, bought me for Christmas um, in 1986 because the Three Stooges were such a big part of uh, uh, shirk it, and so I had a little bit of a, fa a fascination with them, them because um, number five liked them so much, <laughs> and they were they were full of Three Stooges re related uh, mints in short circuits. I actually have a Three Stooges coffee mug uh, that I still still own this day. Um, let's see, let's see a lot of this thing uh, was simple, easy to fo follow. Um, I, I, the, the description you gave kind of, kind of oversimplified it. They were actually janitors at this science lab place where this gal that they seem to admire, admire, they thought she was a lovely, lovely lady, and of course were, were probably a attracted to, to her, but she, she thought of them more of, more of as surrogate fa fathers, because they, they were always, always to her, and, and, um, and, um, they were just rooting for her, you know, and it's actually kind of a thing in the late 50s to be a, be a woman scientist. The, ro the roles to be reversed first and for her boyfriend to be her attention when all she cared about was science. 
and uh, he was a he was a science widower, I guess. He was kind of, you know, he was trying to her attention, and she was all wound up in science, and and uh, um, anyway, they were trying trying to help her leave, leave her job because they they had been told that the the lab was going to close down, and they wanted to make sure she succeeded, and they were trying trying to think of what to help her help her succeed, and and then uh, they were, uh, one of her rockets to to be launched so that she could you know make discoveries. You know, you know, they were closing down her program of study, and, and, and so, of course, in the process, if they accidentally end up, you know, the, the, the rocket accidentally gets gets launched, um, you know, wackiness ensues, and, you know, it was so silly, because go the, they go to Venus, and it just looks, just looks like Earth, and they've gone these, these, these uh, pretty comfy-looking spacesuits, you know, and they were cool, too, they were pretty-looking. And, um, you know, then they meet the giant, giant gray spider and uh, um, the uh, ro- robot computer thing that shrinks them and clones them into robot versions. But I think it's just kind of the random string of science fiction, you know, cliches. I'm not sure why they threw a unicorn into, into it. Um, that's a very fantasy. That would be if they, if they were in a time travel thing, thing and they'd gone back to some to see medi- medieval thing and, and the talk unicorn was, was uh, I'm with Mo Howard that one, that one's lame. The, the talking unicorn was retard, retard. Um, it was sort, sort of a musical. They, they had a couple of musical num- numbers and just when you, you forget it's a musical, they, they throw in this fleet like, goofy one, goofy one, right? With it, them and the unicorn, like, like you know, Strolling along on Venus, which looks something like, you know, a countryside near LA. I was I was joking that it looks like that, that Vasquez Rocks area, area. You know, everything is there. But, um, the, you know, the the robot computer box thing thing with arms. Uh, uh, you know, that's kind of weird. It was like, is it a computer? Is it a robot? Is it a monster? Is it, you know? So, and then there was of course, of course, some. You know, you know, he comedy thing things. The robots chase chasing them. You tell who's who's who, and the doors going going in and out. They had some. They would break in, into a three stooges routine every few minutes, and I found that um, funny. They were funny, and, and um, they didn't over they didn't overdo the stooges um, kind of. Uh, uh, violence that's always so well known for it. You know that that can be a little could have been a little overdone in something like this. Um, you know they didn't overdo do that. They spent just enough of that uh, to make to make it a Stooges movie. And um, and you know I I, I thought the post you know they get, get back it they they after they they get away from the robot versions of themselves they jump on their spaceship and even though I think it really gets shot in the butt by the Joe gets shot in the butt by the fire breathing uh, death death ray spot he somehow doesn't seem to be haunted by that they, they get in the rocket which, which of course all these rockets are, are huge on the side um, and they jump back in the rocket and suddenly cut to earth they've just some, somehow made to launch and do the, do the proper trance Transfers and all and all that somehow get back back to Earth uh, in a fairly short time time frame and um, then then there's a part in their honor and wackiness ensues and apart from being a unicorn there I guess they're maybe be setting for a sequel they they had the bad guys somehow tracked them tracked them down if they had a spaceship and there were a lot, there were lots of great holes but, but you know I guess could lead to a sequel or or in a big type movie movie like 2010 or or something so. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just a, it was just a good old crazy three stooges, you know, extravaganza. Yeah, I actually thought they thought the scene at the end was pretty funny. <laughs> the only way you could get, could get away with a scene like that yeah, is if it was a stooges uh, film. And uh, I, I found the char- characters level and you rooted for them and, um, you know, you, it was just a real simple story and you wanted to see everybody kind of win and they kind of did. So pleasant and easy going, easy to easy to follow. 
uh, uh, not boring. You, you know, it did lag or, or you know, it was it, it had pacing and and uh, didn't have any, you know, extraneous, annoying, you know, never ending sequences that didn't have any point or make any sense. And I thought it was a okay in 5S. Well, Virginia, I, my hat's off up to you. Have you more to say about the film than I, I could ever have imagined? Next up is Sean. You know, that's okay. Sean, you saw the film? Film? I have Rock Rock and Little Rock 1959, the 2.3 Stooges feature film. Uh, what did you think of the block from k 5 yeah. I definitely can't top what Virginia said. <laughs> she pretty well covered it very thoroughly. <laughs> uh, that, I can't just think of any plot parts that she missed. So I really don't have a lot to add. Uh, you know, obviously this, this was, you know, if you're a Three Studios fan, you probably believe very much with this. If you're not, you probably did it. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm not a Three Studios fan. Um, I really... I don't really care for your, your humor, and every one of the shows is pretty much identical. They do, they do the same over and over and over. So after just watching a few of them years, years ago when I did, it was like, like oh, I've had enough of that. <laughs> so for me, I felt something was kind of boring. Uh, I was kind of slow. Um, I was kind of open it was over after the rest of the rocket reason, but then the movie just going. <laughs> it, uh, for me, it definitely, definitely wasn't my liking. Uh, just because the, the, you know, with humor is very, very uh, subjective. And if you're kind of humor, humor then you probably like liked it. But, uh, I will say characters were likable. Uh, there, there were some aspects about it. Surprisingly, somebody did a very good job, job on the uh, the upgrade to 1080p, uh, probably from the original film. It, was, it, did, it did actually look well. I will give a man. I, I was surprised uh, how the movie actually looked. But, uh, yeah, I'm about to stay on there on this one. So the net gave me 99 as well. All right, very good. Thank you, Sean. Let me see where some of the list. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and ask if any out there there would else would, would like to check in. Tonight's movie we're, we're talking about is Cap Rocket with Google. If you'd like, like to join us, come to your call. I'll sign your name. Did you see the film? Not that you thought 1959, it's a problem of 1959. Oh, it's a quiet, quiet tonight. That's okay. Uh, well, my comments on this in the film, I totally, yes, yes I did. I told totally the police board that. Nine, 9 o'clock is very late in the 9, 12, 20 is when the film ended, so I was starting to get a little tired, and I missed uh, the return to Earth, Earth part at any rate. Hmm, what do I, what do I have to cut it? Uh, it yeah, it, it was just uh, typical Stooges stuff, uh, many of the little routines were before. And it was mentioned earlier, too, that, you know, you, you have different uh, uh, work news that they do, but basically the same things happen. Uh, with the uh, Red House and, and uh, uh, all the things that go on and stuff. It wasn't too, too bad, I, I guess. Uh, I, I thought maybe the Rupert team ran a little long um, because of the two reelers, what, 20 minutes long type of thing, thing. And so when you have a movie that's like three times, times that, uh, four times that, uh, uh, your, your three, three feet have a tendency to run a little long, and they were a little, little long, and they had the routine, uh, parts of the routine before, such as, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, coffee, uh, rocket fuel thing uh, is been done many times, times before, and mixing up all the different things to come up with uh, the crazy, exotic uh, things that, that happen to uh, the Japan. Pretty normal, I guess. Yeah. Um, hmm. they, uh, our the port, the port actors were. Oh, I can't talk about them, can I? Then I guess the next. Um, I, 
I, I guess it was okay. I, I, I do have to agree that print, print was good. Uh, it's a rare uh, film like this, although it was Stooges, they were never considered super A-list, although they sure made the Stooges made, made uh, Columbia a lot of the money in the process. So fans out south of any and I, I guess we have an inch. Uh, fairly decent uh, copies of the film, somehow way to shape shape. I'm not sure what the deal was with that, but uh, close to you, Sean, than that, I, I did notice it, and then we forgot about it later on. Nice to have a decent quality, quality version of, of the film. Okay, well, well, that was on my part. part. Let me, uh, at the top of the list, we will go ahead and discuss characterization. I talked to Thomas, but I may come back to you here in a little bit, especially on any sort of trivia things. But no, no, let everybody else talk, talk about that, and then I'm, I'm going to get your opinion. So next up is Brenda, Brenda, W-B-O-Z-L. Brenda, what did you think think of Caridation on our, our fine film? Um, have rocket with your travel. Five O's at all. Uh, uh, well, <clears throat> I'm kind of dumb to say, yeah, I don't think it was passed well. It was, they were good in the parts, you know, you know. I have no idea what they were they were like in life. They were pro they probably had probably had some degrees or some something, and uh, were very intel intelligent people. But they really played the idiot the idiot quite well. Scanning the Wikipedia article about them. Uh, so several of the strokes. You just wonder if maybe all that head hanging might have uh, hurt their brains. Maybe should have worn, worn helmets or something. Which, of course, was a totally different movie. But, um, um, and maybe they weren't really hit, really hit all that it sure looked look like it was at the time, I, you know. Uh, you know, obviously this fails a need that it, a lot of people like. It's just silly, slapstick, escapist comedy. I think it's just so funny when they go to this hoity-doity party. And, and pretty soon everybody at the par party is acting like them and poking each other in the face and, and uh, bumping each other on the head. It's like it's contagious. And that was, I thought, thought kind of funny. <coughs> but, um, um, you know, at least it has ace in it. And I have to say, this poor facts this movie weren't worse than a lot of other serious science fiction movies of the 50s. <clears throat> well, I, I, I just don't have a whole lot more to, more to say uh, um, about characterization. They, uh, the, the, the characters in the movie were fine. You know, it was they, it was just standard care, and uh, you know, they did their part, part and it, it all. Worked. Okay, thank you, thank you, Brenda. You tried fast, fast to 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 pull out that your, your contribution. Uh, you, you, you did best, and that, that's what we, what we can ask. You did better than me. Uh, Virginia NV five F. Your thoughts on characterization or the acting from K five idea? Uh, well, it's a Acted good. It was fine for what it was. I, I, I guess these things, if, if I'm just entertained and um, I come out of it, it, you know, just feeling a little, little bit, um, a little bit happy, happier when I went in. It made me laugh, laugh, and didn't bore, bore me to tears. I, I guess I'm just really forgiving. <laughs> and I was, was not a big Stooges fan when I was a kid, I found it boring, boring after a while, it's like, oh god, god, they're doing the same things over and over and over and over again, and it is kind of violent, and, uh, um, I guess something I enjoyed about this, this was that they, that, 
humor and the things that I'm, I'm completely familiar with. I was surprised by by any of them. Um, and they they first them. I considered it to be fairly gently to the plot. You know, you know, didn't they didn't make them, you know, completely obtuse or actually cared about, about people around them. Them and were trying to do their best at their work and. And he made them into to real sympathetic characters, you know, and I I thought that was a little bit, I guess because of a, a long format thing they wanted, you know, they had to make them into, into characters you'd want to hang with for for that long, whereas in a 20-minute, a, a you know, a 20-minute one, there it's all about how many, how many you know, how many, uh, how many uh, kind of, Stunts and and uh, slapstick eatings can we do? We do. You know, how many of those? Of those can we into one one into one one twenty film? And uh, it makes me think of Brenda's little theory there. You know that I think that physical comedy is kind of hard on the on the body because there's lots of falling and trauma. You know, to the spine and the head. There there might have been thing to what she was saying in there. Uh, that would be an interesting thing to look into. Um, but, uh, and I, I thought, you know, people give Curly Joe a bad rap, um, and, and I, I thought he thought he was fine in these, in these parts to roll. He, he had a Curly-esque quality that I found worked. He, did, he didn't try, he, he didn't try to be the original Curly, but he was, he, he was lovable and, and, uh, and, um, pretty funny and um, um i have thought i always think larry I, th- I, always, I always think larry's just there's something about him that i've i've always just really funny me uh, mo is just for obnoxious and you know always trying to run the show he's so bossy but um i've always thought i've always thought, I thought larry was, was cool um so the the other actors the mean boss who you know Boss them around and down and tells them there's janitors ever seen and the, he's very stereoty- stereotypical. And he's also kind of kind of that guy because he's going to cl- close down the lab and, and the um you know the the guy and the girl you know you know who's the kind of role reversal which I think is a little bit interesting uh, um and uh, they were fine kind good actors um that that guy would Colbert here I think is his name. Uh, I was like, God, that guy's so familiar. And I took his filmographer feed and like a ton of stuff. I'm sure I've seen him in like, you know, just an episode here or there of lot, lot of things. Um, Cause gosh, he was familiar earlier. Um, and and you know, I really think the, the evil bot computer arm box thing, uh, I think that was probably the height of the improvements in this. That it was very convincing. I was thinking M5 from Star Trek, or you know, he, he, I, I think Hal from 2001 might have borrowed a little bit from that guy. Guy, so um, um, you know, I, I, I just, just, but um, um, yeah, I thought. And then the party scene, scene at the end, all characters were were pictures of, of hoity toy people. And then, and of course, like Brenda said, by the end, they're they're doing all the they're acting like the Three Stooges and. And uh, the physical comedy is, is you know, the three the, the three stooges were were physical comedy. Comedy, you know, they def- definitely uh, earned that notoriety and fame, you know, for being pretty good at what they did. And I think they sprinkled it into their acting and then their characters here pretty well. They all they sympathetic characters, and and the bad guy was just a stereotypical, you know, antagonist and. I thought the money did pretty well too. too. The unicorn was annoying. Um, that was just silly. A unicorn that speaks like Shakespearean and has no apparent re- reason for being there. Anyway, anyway, I guess he was the last, the last unicorn on on Venus. Uh, things of that effect. Anyway, anyway, I thought it was all fine for what it was. Just just funny hearted, easy to watch. Um, so yeah, that's my two cents. N V five F. Thank you, thank you, Virginia. Managed to, to coax out a little bit, a little bit more uh, on an interesting narrative. Oh, excellent work. Next up, Sean, baby nine S O K. Sean, your thoughts on the characterization and the acting from film? 
Well, what is this thing? I've already forgot, forgot. Have, space, have rockets, will travel. Have all. Check in before I get my join us. Uh, please call sign. Kilo 5, Victor Papa Charlie. Okay, station KP5, Victor Papa, I miss this. Oh, Charlie. VPC. Welcome. Could I have your name uh, and your location? And, and did you by any chance to see in that wonderful movie we're, we're talking about, Have Rocket at Blue Travel from the 59? Roger, good evening. Uh, my name is Jorge. Jorge. Juliet Oscar Romeo Mio Gold Pico. And again, yes, it's Kilo 5, Sir Papa Pancha, located at Wiley. And uh, oh, I'm enjoying this about the this so just just I'm uh, really enjoying this. It's a man thing thing. That's a man thing thing. And uh, the way you know the ladies define the, the show, the man. But I'm I'm really glad here. And uh, and more than more than that, I I was listening to all that in the Spanish because I came from Spanish country. In the 70s, I remember it was in the Spanish. And it was uh, a little more fun. The assumption. And all that old school cartoons and all that. Oh my goodness, everything was Spanish. But anyways, uh, I really loved it. I really loved it. Yeah, I don't have that, that much to say. Say, I just loved it. Back to you, over. Okay, station KP5 Victor Papa and thank you for checking in this evening. Yeah, yeah, Bash will come on by, and, and you know, when, when we do talk about films in this particular case, you know, and, and especially with, with the Three Stooges, which is with a huge uh, presence in television, uh, from the, the, the two realists, there's even an animated series and things like that. There's, there's plenty of things to talk about, not necessarily the movie that, that we saw. So, so uh, yeah, chime in in any time. Appreciate you, you being here. Okay, uh, I'll make my com comments and then I'll give it to Thomas. Uh, as, far, as far as the act, uh, fine, I agree. I think they gave it all. Uh, Rob Colbert, I recognize mainly from his time on, um, what was it, uh, Time Tunnel. Tunnel. I did actually get to get to him back in, in the, the 2000s at a, a convention uh, in uh, uh, L.A. And there were a bunch of people, mostly, mostly folks from the 60s. 
70s is period in television. That was right, he was right in the middle of that. He's an he's a interesting guy. Most of, the, most of those folks are. They've got, they've got three stories to tell. And he, he, play, he played the antic lead of this franchise uh, husband, I guess, uh, in, in the thing quite well. Let's face it, he's a looking guy, so you get those, those, those roles. Uh, some of uh, interesting uh, sidelights. However, uh, I was listening, I was kind of looking, kind of looking at people. I went to threestooges.net, their website that dedicated to the Stooges. Uh, it, it's not that it's not great. I wish it had, had more details, but it is actually updated. In fact, it was recently updated here to their just a few ago. So this thing continues to do legs and continues to be improved upon. But that, uh, Al McKinnon was the voice, voice the... Uh, uh, unicorn. He, he may sound somewhat, somewhat familiar with the voice of Bluey from the anime uh, series, or the what is it, action series, I guess, I guess. Archie Andrews of the Archie cartoon series. So, and he was co-star of, his third co-star star of the 60s TV series, you know, Boom. I'll have to look that one. I don't recall call him. I don't have a picture of him here either. So that would be interesting. I'll have to look at that up afterwards. I missed that. And then secondly, there's Don Lamont. He was, had, he was the voice of the creation at the beginning of the very serious thing. He was Larry Fine, Fine's son in law. was married to Phyllis Fine, and they divorced in 1967. He had two kids, Rick and Chris. So, uh, been in the family, I guess. Uh, he, he, uh, uh, appeared in uh, an actor in other projects uh, like Fugitive and Business One Five Up. He also appeared as one of one of the uh, uh, readers in as well. Uh, Anna, uh, Dr. Ingrid, Ingrid Vag uh, Vag by Anna Lee So Bud. He was born in Oslo, Norway. Oslo, Norway. She died. died. So, uh, yeah, that accent was real. Um, so there, there you have it there. I don't know about the other, the other there, uh, uh, some folks also appear, appeared, like the fire, he was, he was in some, yeah, two reels. Um, in fact, many of the people, people that were in three were in two reels, so they got some screen time and some bucks for, for the trouble along the way. Okay, uh, other than that, uh, I don't have much, much to say. Uh, I, I heard, and I don't know how true this is, Joe Dorita Dur had a no hell hit, hit clause in his contract. I haven't confirmed that. I thought he did get hit in the, uh, in the film here, but, but I, I just don't remember, remember for sure. There's always, there's always a lot of literal slaps to on. Okay, uh, let's go up to the, I'm going to give Tom Thomas a chance to, to say something. Thomas, I know your favorite uh, uh, um, three just uh, short is three little big beer. Do you have any others, uh, anything that you particularly enjoy, enjoy on the Stooges? And it could be from any form format. I've got the animated, I imagine they did some radio on the way, but, but mostly two reelers or some feature films or whatever, what they're best for. What do you, what do you think from K85 Audio? Yeah, I five five three Sam. Well, as you guys might know, uh, two or three original Stooges were Jewish, so, so they did a film film in the forties called The Tater, where, where they are mocking relentless Hitler. That's it's really good. Other than that, that's uh, all kind of blurred together, but it's always funny when it's curly. Uh, Ki five JCM back to net control. <laughs> Yeah, I remember the films. I, I, one of the, I, I think that was also in one of the films, too, is there, there's two or three of them, maybe four, where they show a map. It has all sorts of funny jokes in the map. It's always in some weird country somewhere that, that nobody's heard of. And uh, also, I, I, they, ran, they ran back to back, back I think, on uh, one of these channels. They ran a back, back to back with them doing the dictator thing and and they had their uniforms on, and, and it's the same uniforms with the, with the same, same, same goals and everything, exactly the same way. So they just, just pulled them out of storage and put them on. 
But they did the same thing in at, at least two movies. I, 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 two of the two realer stuff uh, with, with the gag with the map, which was kind of fun. But yeah, that was good. And being as it was during the wartime, I'm in that. But more power, power to uh, give them a little, a little punch, a little, little poke and I. I was perfect, perfectly happy. Around here, we're going to talk about the uh, special effects or uh, that sort of thing. Let's see, I don't know if we can keep it live long, any, any longer than that, but let's see what happens. I'll start start with Brent, wb 5 Ozell. Uh, uh, effects, music, music, uh, oh, I, uh, well, I'll tell you about Dunning, Dunning here in a bit. But, but uh, uh, Brenda, what do you got for us? Anything that you may have uh, suddenly uh, uh, decided you wanted to, to bring before? Uh, go ahead. This is WB5, B5, oh, <laughs> Well, one of my uh, favorite scenes is when we're seeing to Morse code, and uh, one of the guys was writing it down, and so he says, you know, what did it say? And he goes, beep, 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 beep. I thought, well, that's hilarious. <laughs> Um, special effects, they had all kinds of good bells and buttons and lights and th things like that. And, um, you know, if I, it was what so typical of those movies in the 50s, um, where there's lots of the flashy lights that don't do, do anything. It's just a, a genius factor. Uh, I thought that the music was all for you. It is not necessarily my music, but it is for the movie, and I uh, was kind of surprised to see that they could actually sing. I, I never knew that before, but having never seen one of their movies, you know, there, there you go. Alright, I am going to just start off with wb 55 back and went deep underneath underneath the table. Now it's not back. Okay, I, I, I am in completely. Virginia, ND5F, your your final thoughts? Anything you want to talk about production? Uh, Cole right at KE5 ICX. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Um, well, I will, I will say that maybe the reason I responded so positively to this was because even though I'm not a Three Stooges fan, um, per se, and I kind of endured the Three Stooges when I was a kid, because it, it was black and white, and it wasn't a wasn't cartoon, and it was just, was just the same over and over. I hadn't seen a, seen a Three Stooges short or anything in, gosh, I don't, can't even tell you how many years. Um, so I get kind of brought, brought back a little bit of the mem memories, you know, just the feeling of those sitting up early, early mornings before for school waiting for cartoons to come on and then um I don't, I don't know it it and I just kind of kind of got maybe a little bit of a warm fuzzy I, I didn't expect to get uh I also like I said I, I thought that it, it, it wasn't it, it wasn't bearable I was, I was curious curious whether it's just going to be you know an, an unbearable density of just you know not very very fun comedy um and it was, and it was, it was, it was, it was a good, a good mix, a good, a good, uh, a good, good, um, kind of ratio of, of the slapstick to the actual plot. Um, um, and on that, I found it more than toler tolerable and rather enjoyable at times. Um, let's see what else. The, uh, um, the music was pretty good. Um, it was well done, and it suited the it suited the, 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 the musical. It, it being a musical was a little silly. It seemed kind of kind of like slapped on there. I don't think that was that was typical of the Lovenstuges to do musicals. But um, but you know, I it was kind of kind of a thing where um, maybe, maybe you know maybe it had to do with the, the trends of the time. It was kind of. Musicals were pretty big back then. Maybe they just wanted to uh, comedy, musical, science, science fiction, and sure, slapstick. Um, but you know, it may, makes you see think things that have always been done and probably aren't aren't done as much anymore as they they you where they would take an act from, you know, an act act from or a skit from Saturday Night Live or whatever, and something that's 
typical, like a short, a short form kind of a thing, thing and make it into a movie. Movie, you know, um, kind of the same same idea. You know, let's take, you know, Bobby McKenzie or or Bill and Ted or or not Bill and Ted, um, Wayne's World. You know, I had in my mind, my mind, they kind of up Wayne's World or, or um, you know, you know, name it, and let's start co-eds or. Or uh, uh, whatever, turn it into like a, a movie. You have kind of have that, that that act, which was the original draw, like sprinkled in through there. And, you know, so I kind of thought of it as some something like that when I was watch watching. Um, the, spe- the special effects are common, common late late fifties sci fi black and white movie special effects. I kind of liked the cheesiness of them. I loved the giant death ray spider. I think that was probably my favorite. They just took a tar- tarantula and like. You know, composited it into a scene and animated some kind of a ray, array or or something. It looked more like a death, a death ray to been really fire, but I, I and it was just it didn't make any sound. It would just like crawl in there, and you know, it didn't act menacing. It would crawl along and like shoot shoot death ray stuff, stuff at you, and I just thought that was hilarious. It's like when they take like a an iguana, iguana, you know, try to make it look like, like a dinosaur. It was that kind that kind of comedy. To me, that's tongue in just hilarity, greatness. Um, same way with, you know, with the, the robot box computer thing, you know, just, just, just great humor, just being stupid and, and, and easy and harmless. Very non-threatening and um, generally, you know, fine for when aim out and when, what it's supposed to be. And, uh, um, yeah, and then some of the physicality was pretty, pretty good, predictable. You know, retreaded from olden times, but um, kind of if you go to, you know, it's like Jorge. Jorge's talking like do do especially tend to like do just more more than than the girl, girls, you know. And 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 it's like hey, if you get a little, little bit of what you expect, and it's kind of kind of a memory from childhood. It's kind of just fun, easy watch and fun. And fun. Um, so it seemed like there was one more little, little thing I wanted to say, uh, um, but I can't quite rec- recall what that was, so maybe I'll save it for starting shot somewhere uh, before the end. So uh, that's, that's that's my all thing on just production values in general. Um, and despite the fact, the fact that I used the unicorn horn, uh, the horn, horn on the unicorn looked pretty nice, nice like a unicorn horn. So. But it was it was funny to me, like a, 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 a painted horse and make it a unicorn. That was kind of silly. Uh, anyway, NV5. Okay, thank you, thank you, Virginia. Thank you for for listening. And, and if you got some, I'll I'll, I'll fall upon you with with towards me here, which isn't too far too far away. At the rate we're going, fun. Sean, KB99 is okay. Uh, your uh, thoughts on? Production, uh, music, uh, special effects, or something I haven't covered, covered that can you talk about, or about, or thing they did cover, cover that needs further explanation. Uh, go right ahead. KB9, it's okay. From E5, ICS. Yeah. Okay, KB9, it's okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, sir, I was so surprised how good the good this copy would look. Uh, I was expecting it not, not to be this if, if that, but I'll give them uh, kudos to whoever did that. The, uh, you know, for a 19th movie, I, for, for being a comedy, uh, you, you know, they had a pretty decent job for the special effects effects for that time. Uh, they did put some effort, in, effort into it. Uh, some, sometimes the comedies, they just don't make a whole lot of effort. effort. Uh, you know, and it, well, like the comedy we watched a couple of weeks ago, they, they leaned into the bad, bad props and like, <laughs> this one tried to be a little more more practical. Um, probably the worst worst looking on this was when when the uh, rocket initially crashed and they shook it at a distance. You, you could clearly tell it's just a flat piece of plywood that was because <laughs> it had no depth. You know, that, that was almost funny. And the sub was like, okay, that uh, <laughs> that one was kind of odd. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, not a lot here. Yeah, all, all you know, yeah, the music, music, I guess, was for it. You know, uh, Virginia is right. Musicals used to be super common back then, back then so I'm not surprised. Uh, it's it kind of come back in the last couple of years that a lot of series or series are too 
uh, musical episode. Uh, again, just for giggles, and it seems to be more into the side genre, or genre or, that uh, seems to be doing things that we see on the last season with Strange New Worlds, and uh, those shows are, are becoming commonplace now. They get have one musical. <laughs> Uh, so why not? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, just just know what much else to say about, about this movie. Uh, uh, as always, looking forward to the next one and, and uh, enjoyed here and hearing everybody. Back back to that. Be nice, okay? Very good. Thank you, John. Thanks, thanks for your comments this evening. Now, now, a good minute. Uh, hey, KK5, VPPC, anything else you want to add? Anything about, about the students or uh, maybe how some, uh, probably a kid, I think that's how I saw him as a kid. Uh, you got anything else you'd like to add from ke 5 ICX? This is K5, VPPC, Roy Jeanette. Well, as you all know, uh, the breeze is bright. Oh my goodness, I can like that thing in uh, in depth, depth. and the best part of, of uh, this time can heal he also act in the criminal mind and he will give him a toy so he pretend to be a Spaniard guy you know, talking in that kind of accent no hard for me because, well, you know <laughs> he said, say, my name is Inigo Montoya you killed, killed my father, prepared to die Oh, oh gosh, I might listen to that. I'm really a, a lot of... And, uh, as you know, that is uh, Mr. Potato version of that. that. Uh, and that is, uh, that is uh, my name is I Idaho. So, yeah, you pit my father. Pears to fry. <laughs> Somebody came up with that one. That, that one was good. And uh, final day, the, the guy will hit. I'm a bobo head, too. And uh, the Mrs. Bride, the kidnapped he says, and he say, it's incredible. Oh, man. I love it. Uh, I really, lovely love the job uh, movie. That's all, all I have. Back to you, sir. Hey, thank you, Kiki Jorge. Thank you for sharing, sharing your story. Thank you very much. much appreciate it. Come back again next week. Stay away. Take a nap. That's what I do. And, and this is us again. It's always fun having new people here and uh, have fun with, uh, in this case, case movies, comedy, comedy in this case. Okay, I'm going to make my, my comment here real quick. Uh, I, I noticed George Dunning was listed as, as one of the composers. He actually wrote one of the songs. But uh, this guy is one of the great composers you don't know. Uh, he, he's done tons of television and dark. Uh, also was five time nominated for Academy Awards for composing music. From here to Eternity Picnic. A touch of the sink I think were some some of his. Um, I he, he also uh, was part of uh, K. Kaiser, his radio series, K. Kaiser's College of Musical Knowledge in 1935. So uh, he, he was known around circles. He also in, inspired all people to create Elmer Bernstein. He, uh, he credit, credit uh, nurturing him through the years in film music. Now, Elmer Bernstein from The Magnificent Seven wrote that iconic score. That was one of his heroes. So it's kind of cool to see the CD like that. But, with uh, such much creative work working on the film, and I, I think the music, the music works. Did a lot of comedy stuff uh, through the years. He's uh, known that, uh, but you know, I, I, I think it's really kind of cool that the, this guy is uh, pop every once in a while. I do, do enjoy music when I when I hear it. So that's what I got to say about about that. So back, uh, just some minor thinner things. The art artwork on Pat Rock and Will Travel is a night Nike missile. If you're into nuclear rock, rock uh, nuclear missiles is one of the most striking uh, missiles tools you've ever seen. The guy that uh, I used to work worked on that Nike system back in the, in the 70s. I guess so. and mentioned all sorts of great things. That happened. It was a surprise, my life. 
Other than that, that uh, overall, uh, you know, the special for anything to the right home now, but they weren't, they weren't bad either. Uh, they, they serviced the com com quite well for the world. I'm going to uh, throw it out with any final comments. Anyone have any final, final comments or any check ins? Now is your opportunity to do some with your call. All right, second here to do uh, uh -oh. I get logged out on my own Facebook page. Okay. okay. All right, sorry about that. Uh, the computer was using and then logging out of Facebook. I could, couldn't get back in, so I had to go, had to, go to the other computer. I got this in here, but I, but I had to fucking set up exactly right. Next, next week's week, next movie, another week, comedy, fiction. So we should get some uh, action. So next week's movie, Gal Galaxy. I'll send out the update and the links and all that stuff. Hopefully, hopefully tomorrow. A little late this week because uh, I, I completely forgot it. So I'm going to say 773 to everybody. Thank you for your contributions and your interest this evening. We'll do the same thing next week. We'll catch you later. This is KE85 IDS. We'll go watch Night, Night Stalker and uh, maybe walk in space after that. Or, or I'm at bed. One of the two. See you later. See you later. This is E5 IDS.